Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit. This is the future tournament number four. I'm TJ, joined once again by Trump. Trump, what did you think of that last match? It was fast. It was definitely fast. Yeah, Chucky took it 3-0. So he'll move on to the winner's match. He'll face the winner of this next match. It's going to be Privet, who we saw take the uh, EU qualifier number eight yesterday, versus Silent Storm, who I believe took the um, NA qualifier number seven, so earlier in the week. Um, so both these players, or second place, both these players coming off some pretty strong performances. And we see a different deck here, Privet bringing out a Paladin. Yeah, man, Privet's got the strangest lineup I've seen in a very long time. First of all, no Warrior. Second of all, Paladin and Druid. So uh, if Privet were to match up against Chalky, Chalky's plans would be all ruined. <laughs> he wouldn't have any idea what that lineup was. Yeah, definitely. And I'm a little bit curious because uh, uh, Silent Storm, he's been playing a lot of Paladin recently. Um, he doesn't like Warrior. So um, I'm curious if the decks are backwards or not. Uh, Silent Storm recently hit Rank 1 Legend. He's been Rank 1 Legend since like the beginning of the season. And he's he's done it with Paladin. Um, he's been playing Paladin pretty much throughout his entire laddering for the whole season. So Okay, uh, you, you made a really good call. In fact, Silent Storm is actually the one with the Warlock, uh, Paladin, and Druid. And I recently... Uh, I've got Silent Storm on my friends list, and I know that he was rank one legend uh, for some time. And he's a really interesting guy. He brings a lot of decks which are against the grain, a lot of lineups that are against the grain. Yeah. He really doesn't like meta decks. Um, he won't. It's like he refuses to play the deck that's the most popular at the time. Right now, that happens to be Patron Warrior. Uh, I have not seen him play Patron Warrior in a tournament setting. He might have. But I not, nothing that I've seen. I've seen him play Control Warrior, but it seems like he doesn't like, like Warrior overall. He really likes Druid. He really likes Warlock, as we've seen in the past from his tournament performances. And, of course, this season, he, he made sort of this uh, really interesting Paladin deck that's super strong. It's, it's decent against Patron and really strong against everything else. And uh, uh, I'm really excited to see it in, in action in the tournament throughout the weekend. Yeah, certainly a lot of advantages to be had by going against the grain because, oh my gosh, what is Privet doing? Okay, so uh, certainly a lot of yep. advantages to going across, against the grain because a lot of people have prepared uh, all their lineups to be against Patron Warrior. So when you do that, you certainly make your decks at least a little bit weaker against others. Um, so cool that Silent Storm is embracing that philosophy. Privet is bringing... Uh, a lot of decks, which a lot of cards and decks, which are unusual. Ogre Brood is a card that has always been at the edge of my mind as a card that's like nearly good enough to run, but not quite. It's three mana four four with a slight drawback, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how it works out for Privet. It's definitely threatening enough to Peacekeeper. He ran it, uh, he's been pretty adamant about saying Ogre Brute is his favorite card. Uh, he ran it in his qualifier yesterday, which he won, so, um, or he took second, where he finished top two in the qualifier, and that was throughout a whole open tournament, so he's got a really interesting deck. He's got two Ogre Brutes, the Black Knight, as you can see, which is a tech that we don't see very often nowadays, um, but it's, it definitely is an interesting deck. Silent Storm's deck, on the other hand, he runs, uh, no Quartermasters in Midrange Paladin. Double mm. Defender of Argus, double Owl. It's really interesting. And I was playing the deck earlier today. I played it for like two hours on ladder earlier today. And I've actually, I actually saw the deck a few times. So it's starting to make its way up um, to, the, to the higher uh, legend ranks. And it's, it's just really cool. It's, it's a fun deck to play. It plays a little bit more aggressive than standard Midrange Paladin. And it's really fun. Oh, wow, now Ogre Smart. Uh, <laughs> that was a nice double silence benefit. You got the humility and the dumbness off. Um, yeah, that's really interesting that Quartermaster isn't being run. For I felt like when I was playing Paladin, it was one of the few ways to beat Patron. I wonder if Silent Storm is either just going to give up that matchup or if he is going to... Or if he thinks this deck is actually competitive against Patron. 
it's tough, but it applies a lot of pressure. Um, it doesn't feel like it will, but Defender Vargas is a really great tool. And with Double Owl, you can deny like an Armorsmith plus an Acolyte early or uh, like throughout the game or both Acolytes throughout the game. So it opens up a lot of flexibility. Oh, Talonstorm does have BGH to line up with this Dr. Boom. Yeah, this looks like uh, this looks to be one of those Paladin games where the curve went really well, and the answers are there. Um, so, good stuff. He also matched up against the Druid, which I think is a fairly good matchup for Paladin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have so many tempo tools against Paladin, who usually are playing like one medium to large sized creature each turn. Cards like Aldar Peacekeeper. Or cards like a quality in the mid game, even Defender of Argus, which just allows you to sort of trade up smaller stuff into bigger stuff, uh, really allows um, Paladins to shine in this matchup. It's sort of similar as Shamans, who can turn smaller stuff into sort of bigger things, um, which really helps them uh, against Druid, who have a tough time coming back on a board when they're behind. Man, the Black Knight is such an interesting choice to bring into a tournament setting. Right now, there aren't that many taunts out there, basically. Uh, because in a world where Grim Patron is dominating, uh, there's not that many. I mean, Grim Patron obviously doesn't have any taunts, and then the deck that Unstable do have taunts. Unstable Ghoul. No, okay, that's true enough. <laughs> um, the decks that do have taunts usually just a Sludge Belcher here and there, and you can't really even count on it. Hunters don't run taunts, so that's two of the decks that are really popular. So, a very interesting call to tech that in. Uh, Privet takes a long time to think about. And finally, play Emperor Thorsan. I uh, guess he was thinking about Druid of the Claw instead, trying to go for some kind of uh, Emperor Thorsan reducing more key cards of the combo, but just looked like a good card to play on curve. Yeah. Silencorm, he hasn't really found himself really in a position where he's played too much into swipe. He coined out the muster for battle, so it wasn't quite a swipe turn yet. So he's probably going to be pretty wary of it for a while until he sees one or until he finds a turn where Swipe would have been really great against his board. Um, he did have an opportunity to sort of just get a lot of value out of his cards last turn by like Aldor Peacekeepering and uh, using def and uh, like trading in his, his BGH and leaving it at one health, but it would have been super vulnerable to Swipe. Yeah, Sunstorm is just uh, making some... Very strong, like on curve plays every single turn, and the Paladin Nero power really fills out the curve very nicely. And now with this Defender of Argus, he looks to be extremely safe from the Force Savage combo. Yeah, and even through Black Knight, like Black Knight, if it can come down here on the Paladin Shredder, which is probably the best you can ask for besides a Tyrion, um, then what else is he going to play? Uh, it, he can play BGH as a body, but he's still looking at a lot of pressure. Uh, at this stage, he he can try and hold on to Black Knight, but he really can't afford to take too much more damage and try and like wait out for for a Tyrion or something like that. It's a, it's a rough right. spot. It's very rough. Uh, Privet can't play the Druid of the Claw with anything else, since that would add up to 9 mana, so he kind of wants to play Ancient of Lore, but the tempo from Silent Storm is just too much. That's 13 damage from Silent Storm on the board. So, therefore, he needs to play either Black Knight or Druid of Thought. Or he could be thinking about doing the Force Savage, in which case he needs to yeah. move quickly <laughs> due to the animations. Uh, tough spot. I don't think any of the plays will actually save him. He's going to go for the heal play, which is... which is, like, just surviving, but it's not really going to win him the game. Yeah, he's got 13 damage on the board right now. Um, he could get a maximum of uh, 15, I think, if he knife juggled and then mustered. He'd get one juggle because that's all he'd have space for on the board, and then he would be able to attack in. So it looks like he is just going to play the Tyrion, in which case saving the Black Knight did work. It's not very often that Paladins get to play Tyrion right on turn 8. It's vulnerable to Keeper, it's vulnerable to Black Knight, but uh, Silent Storm realizes he put on enough pressure this game that even just a 6-6 body, if it gets keepered, it's going to be enough to win in the game. Right. If only Privet had more health, then he's got the Black Knight Harrison dream next yeah. turn. <laughs> it's, uh, it would behoove Privet not to show off the Black Knight since that's valuable tech information. Ooh. 
It would, um, yeah, try to go for the dooms there. Good call. Yeah, check into that first. Um, but it's a three attack minion, so even with Black Knight, I just don't think there's a way for him to get through this. Uh, he can't Black Knight and Force of Nature, for example, to try and clear off. So looks like he is just going to throw out the well played. Realizes that Silent Storm definitely has this one in the bag. Goes ahead and concedes. Yep. Yeah, I really, uh, I really like that Paladin much. deck. Yeah, Paladin at its best. Uh, when you can play on curve each turn and fill it out with hero powers, the hero powers really make the curve more consistent mm -hmm. because sometimes you're two mana short, yes, but your hero power actually develops the board. So that's a lot of the strength of that deck. Yeah, the double defender of Argus, uh, I really like because it helps against... I, the deck doesn't run like Heelbot. It runs land hands, but it does run like Heelbot. So it runs Cog Hammer as well. So it's like super, I don't know, I don't even know what to call it. It's a mid-range paladin, but it's a different flavor than what people are normally used to. It's, it's awesome, though. It's an awesome deck. Uh, we are going to move into the next matchup, though. Uh, it's going to be Handlock versus Malagos Warlock, which Privet brought yesterday. It looks like Privet just going with the exact same deck lineup that he went with in his qualifier yesterday. Realized that it's uh, pretty strong. Okay, very unorthodox. Uh, Malagos Warlock is great against Handlock. But you just, uh, sometimes you don't see the handlock, and it holds its own against uh, mm -hmm. Patron. I wonder if uh, Monk has stats on what a Malagos Warlock does against the handlock. I would expect the Malagos Warlock to be looking pretty good. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so as well. The, the one thing is that uh, you don't necessarily have as big a threats to stand up to their big threats early on. But you do have a lot of removal. Um, usually, I think Privet ran Siphon Soul. He even if he just has like Azure Drake, he it, he can like Implosion, and they have a lot of mid rangey creatures that can sometimes be tough for Handlocks to deal with. In the same way that sometimes Druid can be tough for Handlocks to deal with. Right. Um, so it's kind of a two step process. So first of all, the Handlock threatens the Malagos Warlock with that four drop, and the and they ask the Malagos Warlock the question. Can you handle my 8-8s or can you handle my 410? And the Malagos Warlock is sometimes packing two BGH, sometimes one, and that's the easy answer. And they usually have the owl for the uh, Drake as well. Um, but that's the first step. And sometimes mm -hmm. the handlock wins because there is no answer. In this case, even the small minions combined with the Dark Bomb, with the Do Twilight Drake, it looks like it's going to work out. And then if the handlock can't kill him, you just kind of get into the late game where the handlock has naturally tapped themselves to a low amount of health and you just soul fire with the Malagos to get through the taunt. It's pretty good. Yeah, the double BGH is a big thing to mention. Um, I, I believe Privet did run it, if I remember correctly. There's always a chance he could have ch changed up his decks, which probably would be smart, but I don't think BGH is something where you really want need to to conceal that type of information um, unless your opponents know that you're going to bring that deck they can't really know until the, the actual tournament starts but Privet was running double BGH so doesn't have one in his hand right now so this Mountain Giant's going to be a little bit tougher to deal with right um, at least the good news is it looks like I mean that's what the small minions are there for also to chip away at the Giants and also Privet has to be worried about dealing damage to the face right now because he cannot handle the uh, Molten Giants at all. This was an interesting way to deal with it. I didn't think that the uh, I didn't think the Ancient Watcher was in any rush to be a threat to be dealt with. Looks like he's playing around Shadow Flame. Uh, he wants him to Shadow Flame the Mountain if he's going to Shadow Flame anything. Um, could be a possibility. And it looks like uh, you were right, Trump. Malagos Warlock does have an advantage in competitive play uh, by a pretty large margin. It's a rather small sample size. Uh, seven and two. Seven wins, two losses um, for the Malagos Warlock against Handlock. So that's a pretty great matchup. But it is. That's uh, one of the big reasons why Malagos Warlock enjoyed such a uh, time in the sun for a moment because everyone was running Handlock to try to counter the Patron Warrior and then Malagos Warlock shows up and it's good against Handlock, it's reasonable against Patron Warrior, so uh, natural choice. 
All right. So Silent Storm has a lot of damage on the board. And with Lotheb, it's going to lock out a lot of these key spells that Privet was probably going to rely on um, to clear the board this turn. Unless he wants to throw in a lot of his creatures. Right. That Dark Bomb uh, and sending him the 4 2 into the Mountain Giant looks so good. Now it's not a choice, though. Privet is really close to winning. Um, if he were to attack the face for 11 damage, he actually has 11 in hand with Soul Fire, Soul Fire, Dark Bomb. Ooh. Uh, so that's. If he were to know Silent Storm's hand, I uh, couldn't kill him, one, and two, didn't have healing, then that would absolutely be the best play. But it's a little bit difficult to make the call. Privet goes for it and is going to be really happy. Oh! Is he going to attack with the 3 5? Is he at this moment going to not attack? Oh, Privet. He's he at the to play it. around mountains, or Moltens, rather. Yeah. Well, he didn't play around Moltens because if he had been keeping track, Silent Storm has the coin. So he still could, if he had it, Molten Coin Shadow Flame. Um, he might have just not gotten the attack in, maybe took too long to the side, or uh, maybe lagged a little bit, who knows. A little bit interesting that he would attack that much, but wait. Uh, and the Soulfire, Soulfire, Dark Bomb combo is a little bit risky. There's always that chance that the first Soulfire discards the second. There is. I think um, the not attack was definitely deliberate, and he might be making the call, okay, I can probably get in Let's see, so he's got the 11. I can probably get in the 2 damage with one of my minions. and But here's the tough thing. Uh, he can't because of the taunts. Um, also, you might be thinking, okay, if the Azure Drake survives, I also have enough. And yeah. in this case, he's actually going to be correct. So right. Looks like he's got to go for it. He might actually have it guaranteed because he just drew VGH. So. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. He does. Um, with the four damage from the Azure Drake, plus the four from Dark Bomb, he can even Mortal Coil. He's got plenty. Yeah. Yep. Plenty to spare. That was uh, Malgos versus Hamla, kind of at its ideal point for kind mm -hmm. of both decks because uh, Hamla got to get the Giant off on four, and then got another big card on five and a big card on six, and it's just Privet had the damage and the supplemental damage from minions. So, game plan was carried out from both sides. Malagos wins. Uh, good one for Privet. Yeah, so that's going to up the Malagos Warlock versus Hemlock matchup slightly in uh, favor more for Malagos with, with that victory. Going to bring it up to an 8-2 and two record in competitive play. And so that's going to tie up the series 1-1. One to one. Uh, How the rest of the decks line up is going to be a little interesting. Both players have Druid. Silent Storm is Handlock, and Privet has probably Patron if he's going with the same lineup that he did yesterday. So this is going to be a really big deal for Privet. He wants to sort of dodge the poor matchup and get the good matchup. And we are going to jump in here. It's going to be Druid versus Druid Mirror. Okay, so this is kind of dodging the bad matchup for both players. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're just kind of playing the quote-unquote less important match, but... Uh, well, the less decisive match, I should say, which actually makes this match pretty decisive because this is the one that's kind of uncertain. Yeah. And this... Uh, the early the game here is... Yeah, it's dependent a lot on the wild growth. And we saw Silent Storm did have the wild growth. Or no, Privet had the... Yeah, Silent Storm had the wild growth. They flip-flopped. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so... When you get this many innervates, turn one tends to be the hardest turn. Uh, do you coin wild growth? Do you wait? Uh, because you drew the second innervate, I think doing this is good. The next turn you set up innervate druid, then you go shredder. That's a really strong start. Yeah. There is some merit to playing quickly on turn one when you have double innervate because it makes your, uh, if you think for a long time on turn one, it makes your opponent know that you have. Uh, lots of plays to think about, which on turn one the only thing you could have would be innervates. So it might make their decision a little bit easier if you think a lot on turn one with the wild growth. Um, Silent Storm is just a fast player overall. Uh, he's one of the fastest players I've seen in professional play. He plays a lot. Uh, he plays very instinctually. So 
he's going to go fast no matter what. But the, I think the playing fast on, on turn one, even if you have double innervates, is pretty advantageous in that regard. Mm-hmm. Privet's actually got a lot of choices here. Sludge Belcher, Drew the Claw, or even Ogre Brute. Ogre Brute looks to be the weakest of the choices because it yeah. just dies to the 4-6. So uh, it's up to him on whether or not he wants to deal 4 to it and have his guy survive or to deal 3 to it and have his guy possibly get hero powered down. Um, it's kind of a close call. I'm so surprised that this is his favorite card. It's a really interesting favorite card to have. Yesterday, on one of the board states, he had guaranteed lethal, but his Ogre Brute missed. <laughs> he still won the game, but it was just it was uh, really interesting. There was another turn where he had guaranteed lethal, and he like held off for a while. He debated attacking into the, the minion that was on the board, because <laughs> it's a 50-50 regardless. It really doesn't matter which one you attack. Um, if there's one minion on the board, and uh, he ended up getting it, which was really entertaining. It's an entertaining card to say the least, but a weird card to have as your favorite. You know, I I can't uh, I can't oppose that. Ogre Brute ranks pretty highly in my list of favorite cards as well, and part of its draw is just that it's costed so well, three mana four four, and the drawback is it, it depends on who you ask, I guess, but the drawback yeah. isn't that bad. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, Soundstorm ran pretty hard early on, but uh, he sort of just missed his last turn. Only having hero power to use on turn 5 as a druid player, especially the mirror matchup, is not where you want to be. This matchup's reliant so much on uh, the state of the board, on controlling the board, that if you miss one turn, a lot of times you just give initiative over to your opponents, and sometimes that can spell, spell doom. That's right. Really good chance for Privet to catch up, and he did there uh, on that turn. Um, that drop it was all right. Um, right now, I mean, Silent Storm looked like he was going to run away with the game. He had such a strong start, but because he missed that turn five play, it's a lot closer now. Two Ogre Brutes. What a fan. So I guess he replaces Shade of Nax Remus. Is that right? Uh, I believe he has one Shade as well. Um, and he all, yeah, he might even run double shade. We only saw one yesterday, but he really just likes the three drops. I'm not sure. I, I couldn't really calculate what he cut because we never saw more than 20 cards in his deck. Um, and he only played it like, uh, twice, I think throughout the day. Uh, he, he, I think he won both times with it. So cool I, I'm not, don't know for sure. All right, this is a tough uh, spot because you can't kill off your own bear in T. Sylvanas, so Privet's going to have to decide whether or not to just eat the loss right now and hero power and bear into Sylvanas, giving him 4-1, or to go into the 2-2, or just to like fill up the board with uh, even more stuff for Sylvanas to steal. It's A 4-4 is pretty good to steal, but uh, oh my gosh, this, these ogres are going to be a big deal in terms of what they do. Yeah, it's it's funny because he's putting on a lot of pressure, but it's it's pressure that you can't really guarantee. Um, like if he had combo here, he wouldn't be guaranteed lethal because you never know what those ogre boots gonna do. Yeah, what a uh, privet wants to do is be able to attack the ancient of lore with uh, both possibly, and then hero power down the Sylvanas. Uh, it wouldn't be bad to hit either the Ancient of Lore or Sylvanas there. Uh, manages to carry out his plan, so good job, Ogre Brutes. Ogre, no stupid. The Ogre had like a 75% chance to succeed either one because yeah. if it misses... Well, no, because of the first one, it's Sylvanas. That would have been really bad. Yeah, yep, it would. Well, Privet sort of has the initiative here, but Silent Storm definitely has the advantage, the card advantage, and um, it's hard to tell which one's going to be the best. Neither player has a health advantage either, so it's still a pretty even game. Privet does have Ancient of War to refill his hand. He is a mana behind, so that's something to calculate in. Yep, fortunately for Privet, he does have the Ancient of War. Uh, that's going to catch him up a good amount. Uh, Silent Storm also has one. If Silent Storm didn't have one, it would probably be a very close... Um, looks like he's going to be comfortable enough just dropping the Harrison Jones. Not a great play, but 
Uh, usually you want to play the Ancient of Lore last. I guess he feels good enough about the Harrison in this spot. Makes sense. Yeah. Just being able to squeeze in that hero power is useful too in a matchup which looks like it's winding down. Yeah. So this is a tough situation. Uh, if he plays Dr. Boom, then he gets really punished by uh, BGH because he'll be left with not much of a board. Privet will still have six mana left over. It's starting to get to that point where uh, players have enough mana for combo and they're in range where if they leave one or two creatures on the board, combo all of a sudden starts to become a threat. But he does decide to go with the Dr. Boom over the Ancient of Lore and trying to put on the pressure. No BGH. Yep. I mean, it's the right call to make either way because you want to play the card draw a card last and if you get BGH, you might as well get BGH earlier when there's less chance. I guess uh, in the case where Privet specifically has BGH, the Ancient of Lore is better for sure. Uh, but when you weigh that against you just winning the game, if BGH goes, or if Dr. Boom goes unanswered, I like that play. Uh, Privet forced now to go into his plan. He's a turn late into it. Uh, gets these meh cards, slow cards. Yeah. And, I mean, how much damage is this? Is that just lethal? That is just lethal. With Force of Nature and Swipe. That's enough. Yep. Even if the Boombot didn't hit it, uh, the face, it would uh, still be enough damage, I believe. So, a Silent Storm looks like he is going to take a 2-1 to one lead in the series. Now, only with a Handlock remaining. Alright. Well, that's... Uh really good for him because Handlock is going to at least match up into Patron and Handlock uh, I'd say it's a little bit unfavored against Druid. I'll ask Monk though. Yeah, that's a, an interesting statistic. A lot of players put it pretty close to 50-50. Um, both decks sort of have a similar style where they're both sort of ramp decks uh, where Warlocks are trying to sort of ramp into their big drops um, by tapping and uh, druids are trying to ramp into their big drops by getting wild growth and innervate. So both players are just sort of trying to accelerate their, their game into bigger stuff. And basically whoever gets their big stuff first is, uh, is usually the one that wins. Druids always have the threat of combo, which is something that you have to factor into the matchup. Wow, that's... We yeah, did it's so nice to have these statistics. As it turns out, a good amount of Handlock versus Midrange Druid has been categorized by Monk, and uh, the record is 41 to 32, with Handlock having a 56% advantage. Um, a little bit surprising to me as a Handlock player, because I've always been a bit pessimistic about this matchup, but it turns out that Cold Hearts stats are really helpful in really just getting rid of all the bias, because... Uh, as a handlock player all the time, you get your Twilight Drake silenced, you get your Mountain Giant BGH'd, and then you lose the game. But sometimes they don't have it. And in this case, uh, you do have the Twilight Drake, you do have the Mountain Giant. Uh, the opponent does have the Keeper. But he doesn't have the BGH. So it's going to be okay for Silent Storm. Um, as a handlock player, I'd be tempted to go with the Twilight Drake first because... Even if it gets keepered, you can't get the hero power with it, and you can tap a giant. Yeah. Uh, if you go first, uh, yeah, you can tap and make the three mana giant the next turn. Um, oh, Black Knight is actually going to be a pretty big deal in this matchup, I, I assume. Because 99% of the time, you, you will find a, a taunted target to, to kill. So I guess Privet. Uh, this is probably one of the matchups that he had in mind the most when he put that tech card in, I'd assume. That's right. It's a really big deal. And he hasn't shown it in any of the matches yet. So, Oh, also, Sandstorm, um, we did see him draw an Ancient of War in the really late game. That would have been a really big swing card. Yeah. Definitely. There's so many threats already in Sandstorm's hand. Both Molens. So we'll see how Privet is going to dance around the Moltens once he gets to that point. It probably is going to get to that point because it looks like Privet has sort of the initiative here. He doesn't find a, a target or a BGH for this 
this mountain giant though so he's able to answer the first threat pretty easily but the second threat is going to stick on the board and do some damage yeah, Privet's uh, going to have to think about whether or not he wants to... There were a few interesting options there. He could charge Drew the Claw, set the opponent down to 9, and then there's two swipes in hand, but it's going to be tough finding that one damage, and like double Moltens would probably kill you. Um, he could have gone for the Shredder into the Giant and then swiped the Giant, but I suppose there's no rush for it, uh, since the opponent is probably going to trade into your stuff anyways. So I like this kind of medium of the road play by Privet. Yeah, and he, he can take the more aggressive approach because he knows that he does have the Black Knight. So if Silent Storm, he puts him low enough to where Silent Storm can play like one Molten and a Taunt, he knows that next turn he can just play the Black Knight and completely um, just remove one of the one of the. That the was a really creatures. interesting play by Silent Storm. I wasn't sure if he was going to pull it off because you are going to burn the card. But by dropping that two health, you can exactly do the two Moltens and the Sun Fury. Um, I think if I was playing it, I would have um, just gone with one Molten and taunted the 8-5 as well. But Soundstorm goes with the much more aggressive approach. Yeah, and I like it. it. He ends up trading a random card in his deck for being able to have an extra Molten on the board, which, as it turns out, is going to be a pretty big deal. BGH picked up for Privet. Wow. Man, BGH and Black Knight. That's this is gonna be a really spicy showdown. So he's got to decide which one to use first. I'd imagine Black Knight it just lines up so nicely. Next, he doesn't really have anything to play with the BGH. I think he's just deciding on what's the most efficient way to go about the turn after that. But um, it feels like Black Knight is better. Yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, just because next turn can also be. Black Knight plus, or BGH plus Swipe. Um, I'm a little surprised that he's trading his minions, uh, which showcases that he's actually going to use BGH. Okay. okay. This allows him to kill both giants. Yeah. Which he has to take a little bit of damage to but, do so. He doesn't build as strong of a board, but I guess it's sort of the safer play because he doesn't leave the damage up for one more turn. Yeah, I don't know about that, though, because uh, there's no more Black Knight targets. <laughs> I guess he just assumes that he's going to get one anyway. Silencer is at 11 health, so he can't really afford to not taunt up. Oh, but yep. Lothab, still no Black Knight target. Wow, definitely dodged. And I like the Lothab there because uh, it basically means you have to play exactly a taunt minion, otherwise you die. Uh, actually, in this case, Ancient of Lore is used for healing, so... That's not quite death, but uh, Soundstorm is going to be able to get a really favorable 50-50 here. Yeah. Either uh, win the game or clear 5-5. Five, five. Uh, there's a win. He's got to calculate a little bit uh, if it's if losing it will lose him the game. If Rag hits the Ancient of Lore, can he do 11 damage from hand? Which it I mean, he's seen one Innervate, so the likelihood that he has Innervate combo is pretty low. Um, That's correct, but he may feel in such a good spot. Like, sometimes when you're in this spot, you have to ask yourself, all right, I'm in a really good spot. Uh, the only way I can lose is exactly Innervate for Savage. Uh, can I... Is it worth it to take a slightly less good play and risk losing the game over a long time to not take this 50-50 favorable. And it looks like Storm is so confident that he's going to win that he's going to, in fact, take the uh, the way that, in his eyes, will win him the game uh, a bit more than like the 90% chance that Ragnaros would have given him. Yeah. And there is a still potential for him to win next turn. Oh, wow, the double swipe play. Okay. That's not going to quite be game. I think he's going to be one damage off. This is actually a little bit punishing for uh, Silent Storm. If he knew this was going to be the answer, he probably wouldn't have wanted to take the line. Um, although, in this case, all right, he does taunt up. He's not going to die to the four Savage. So, actually, at the end of the... Wow, and four Savage was drawn. So it looks like at the end of the day, uh, the play that Silent Storm made seems to be traveled down a path that wins, like, in fact, over 90% of the time. 
since it seemed like Privet had the perfect answer since Soundstorm still wins. It can feel like a little bit of a missed opportunity to pass up on a 50-50 chance to just straight up win the game, but like you said, he found a path that most likely gives him a higher opportunity to win, so um, maybe not expecting the Black Knight as much. How much damage is this? He's got five on the board. Uh, Defender Vargas could represent an extra two, so that'd be seven. Not quite there. Boombots can do some damage. Yeah, this is troubling because if uh, Sunstorm doesn't win, the combo is right there. And this time, uh, hmm, I wonder if, well, if he leaves the guys on the board, the combo is going to get him. Uh, so we're going to have a bit of bombing here. I mean, I feel like no matter how these bombs fall, it's going to be good for him. If they go face, he can just win. Ooh, a one damage bomb. That is rough. Oof. Oh boy, I at this point, Silent Storm regrets everything. He can go for a 50-50. Yes, that's true. I think that's um, going to be his best opportunity. Once again, it's going to come down to a 50-50. Crazy that it came to this. Uh-oh. Can oh, Rag find man. its target? No! Oh, he regrets everything! Oh my gosh, I, I didn't see Sonstorm losing that game, but through the series of specifically two swipes and specifically Black Knight and Ragnaros missing at the end, uh, Sonstorm has lost a game that looked like if you were to make the obvious play, you win 90% of the time. And at the time that he went down the other road, I actually thought he was going to win over 90% of the time. Uh, the problem with making the play... Uh, later to do the 50-50 is you actually lose to Force Savage, whereas if you made the play earlier, you don't lose except to exactly innervate Force Savage. Um, he can't be blamed for making that play. Uh, on paper, I mean, this is the part of Hearthstone which is like really cloudy, you never know exactly how it's going to go, but wow, him losing that game, what a defeat. Yeah. It, it, like you said, it can really feel rough not using the getting the 50 50 earlier but there were so many things that could have happened that he would have just won the game even more reliably as the turns went on um i mean you look at privet's hand he had to pretty much have exactly black knight with force of nature already in there to win from that situation the bo bombs had to hit exactly how they hit oh they yeah very similar too. yep so it, it's yeah, like you said, you can't really beat yourself up too much for making that decision because I think at the end of the day it probably was right, but uh, it is a, a crushing defeat. So game number five it is, Patron Warrior versus Handlock. Yep, and if there's any consolation for Silent Storm, this is the matchup you would love to base the entire match off of, and you've got a hand of three of the big things. Looking good. Uh, Privet with a interesting take on Patron Warrior, already seeing two Taskmasters. Yeah, really interesting. Uh, there is still wiggle room in Patient Warrior. Uh, even though it's been around for a while, players have sort of found somewhat optimal lists for it. There are still quite a few things that you can sub out. Um, there's still people that run Loot Hoarders, people that run uh, Shield Slam is still a card that some people run, some people do not. The Cool Taskmasters, as you mentioned, as you can see in the hand of Privet. Mm -hmm. Privet's going to be a little sad that he only drew one card from the Acolyte, and but he's going to be happy that he has the Execute. Uh, this is the first tough decision of Patron Warrior, probably, whether or not you want to execute a 4-9. 8-8s uh, eight give so much more pressure. 4-9s, I generally just go with hitting it twice with the weapon. I think you... You usually have to tank the damage from the first threat. Because um, you can't be too hasty with the execute because you know that there's always going to be something bigger and scarier to execute. So that, that first threat, you always feel like you want to tank the damage to try and save the execute, which, I mean, Privet does have some, some good tools for it. but That's right. Uh, boom, Silent tough. Storm draws the fourth uh, threat. That's pretty much ideal for 
hand lock. In fact, to some extent, this might be a little too much of a good thing uh, that you drew all four, but that's like a first world hand lock problem. Too much of a good thing that sometimes you just get so caught up in playing threats that the Patriot Warrior somehow manages to find all their damage when the game not. Nah, really happens, but um, yeah, it's. Silasorb just has all the tools. Even Lotheb is so strong against Patron in this matchup because a lot of times you're the one with the initiative playing threats and the Patron Warrior is the one responding and not giving them basically any tools. They can't Battle Rage, they can't Whirlwind to try and clear things off. If you play Lotheb, such a strong card. It usually lock, locks them out of the game. Right. The too much of a good thing probably happens more of if you don't have a Taunt Giver. But in this case, Sunstorm also has it. Uh, probably the one thing that he lacks, which would be kind of nice to have, is one AoE. But you can't have everything. Can't have everything. That is true. Yeah, Privet finds a way to get through at least the mountain. But he's going to be a little disappointed when he sees what's going to come out again the next turn. Oof, on this turn, Sunstorm could uh, go as big as Mountain Giant, Coin Twilight Drake for getting all the big cards out there. And looks like that is going to be the path he takes. Uh, crushing as a patron warrior to see turn four big card, turn five big card, turn six two big cards. Yeah. And I mean, the he could take solace in the fact that at least the second Twilight Drake is a 4-8. Instead of a four nine or a four ten, but that's a very very small uh, victory for for Privet. Yep, uh, hand looks really grim with no card draw, and obviously you don't have the tools to clear uh, twenty one health worth of stuff from the board, which is eventually going to kill you. Yeah, the again one of the tough things from this matchup is just. Removing the threats while also keeping enough pieces, combo pieces in your hand to actually win the game. Because he can deal with these somewhat, but does he have enough health to survive it? And does he have enough actual damage to once he deals with the threats to push through? I mean, he's at 18 health right now. How, how in the world is he going to get through this? Eh, just one of those games where too bad. One of those games. Too bad. Oh, Got man. crushed. I feel like so many Patron Warrior handlock games go down this route. Um, this the... is pretty much the ideal dream of a handlock to get four drop, five drop, and then on six you play both of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's sort of somewhat rare for that to happen with all four. Usually this might happen if you only have like two of them, but the patron warrior doesn't have the execute, then it's kind of the same situation where you have that many threats. Uh, like Brivet managed to deal with two of the threats, but it's just you can't handle this many this quickly. Yeah. And if he swings in for four here, he's just going to be uh, dead to the board. So, Actually, one off, but Defender of Argus is going to kill him. And it looks like Silent Storm just going to do a little quick napkin math, but going to realize that he does have the lethal. So he's going to take the series three to two. He'll move on to face Chalky in the winner's match. Uh, Privet will move down to face Impact in the losers match. So, so far today, Handlock having a lot of success. Uh, that's correct. It has matched up against Patron twice, though. and But both times, it, it it feels really good to play Handlock and crush those puny Patrons. Yeah, we'll have to see uh, once it Handlock inevitably matches up against Midrange Hunter, if it's going to meet the same fate, if it's going to meet the same success. As we do see, a couple of the players today are bringing... Uh, a hunter, but uh, definitely uh, a nice match for Silent Storm, uh, especially coming back after the crushing defeat in the uh, Druid versus Handlock matchup that he's that he manages to take a victory. So well played to him. I believe we are going to broadcast the winners match next. So we're going to move into Silent Storm versus Chalky, 
And, of course, the winner of that match will move on to the playoff stage on Sunday. So semifinals uh, get automatically placed in the semifinals and uh, automatically guarantee themselves at least uh, $750. So uh, quite a bit of money. Ch uh, Trump, I, I want to ask you, who out of this group would you be the most afraid of uh, to face at PAX if they made it through? Huh. Um... I like preparing against uh, some kind of PAX. Oh my gosh. It, it's going to be interesting because PAX is going to be at a time when the Grand Tournament will be out. Uh, have we decided on... Yeah, it's going to have the cards added, right? So I'd imagine I'd so, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably be afraid of the more innovative players, uh, the Privets and the Sunstorms. So uh, these guys are bringing interesting decks. Uh, they might be able to adapt quicker to the new stuff. Uh, so... I'm hoping some old geezer who keeps bringing the same tried and true decks wins. <laughs> you you always have to keep in mind though, Trump. Chalky was the champion of the race for Black Rock Mountain multiple times. Oh, that's which true. Did reward innovation. So, Chalky, even though he is could be considered an old geezer who brings the same decks a lot, he was known for for innovation at multiple times in his his career. So. It right. is a, I think I hope that none of these four players make it. It's possible. <laughs> All right. None of them will. Nice amendment there. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break before we jump into the winner's match of the day. But don't go anywhere. More Summer Circuit action continues right after this.